I'll just assume you guys are busy doing, uh, doing good. We are now streaming live on YouTube. Hi, everyone. Welcome to eLearn Chat. Uh, you see some people next to me right there. We've got um, Marcus Graham. He is the CEO and president of GM Voices. Uh, and next to him, we've got our lovely friend and co-host, Linda Joy, who's also registered with GM Voices. So yes. it's, it's, a, it's a coincidence of sorts. But Hi, everyone. So for all, oh, let's see, so everything's going pretty well. Let me just do a quick look at shots. So this is Linda's shot right there with that nice smile. And here we have Marcus's shot. Looking good. You're in your studio, right? Yeah, I'm in one of our studios, yes. Yep, it always looks nice. And then here we have a shot of both of you together. Looks good. And we're going to do our other shot. I'm with you right now, Marcus. And this one is with Linda. You and I, Linda, are together at this point. And if you guys, I was just going to say, if you guys want to see what we're doing, unfortunately, you can't. But this is a shot of our studio as we are working. So I'm over there. And we've got all of our gear on this side. So we'll go back to a different shot. And here we are again in our three shot. So I'm going to start us off with the two shot. Um, and Marcus, we will introduce you in a moment. We're going to first start out with our, our intro and we're going to start the recording in three, two and one. Hi everyone. Welcome to eLearn Chat, where talk, it's knowledge. And today we've got some great talk with people who specialize in, well, talking. And uh, joining me right now is somebody who talks for a living, and that is Linda Joy. Linda, how are Hi. you today? I am doing great, Rick. And, and Linda, today, unfortunately, you're not seeing us. We're having a little bit of a glitch with our, our vMix, where normally you can see what we're doing. And today, I'm not sure why you can't. So yes. you're flying blind. So today we're actually, Marie can believe we're doing an, a radio interview. I can see everybody and you can too out in the audience, but they're not seeing what, they're probably just seeing my scary face on their Skype, which is, which is scary in and of itself. But we'll get by, we'll get by. And, uh, and today the show is all about voiceover. It's about voiceover talent. Um, it's about uh, recording voiceover, getting voiceover, localization. We'll have a good time. Why don't we start our show? right now. We are back. So Linda, you're a voiceover talent. You've been around for quite a while doing professional voice. You've done cartoons, movies, videos, whatever. You've done a lot of different things. Yes. And, and you know Marcus from, from having worked with him or being registered with them. And uh, let's introduce our guest today. Our guest today is, um, let me go to this shot right here so you can see all of us together. There we are, right in the middle over here in the position of influence and power. It's Marcus Graham. How are you, Marcus? Doing great, Rick. How are you? I, I am doing great. I'm so glad you could join us. I know we've, we've met in the past on a different show, but eLearn Chat uh, reaches a, a much wider audience in terms of people who need voiceover work. They need localization, translations, everything else. Tell us a little bit about GM Voices. Uh, we're basically in the voice production business for uh, corporate uh, company or for companies. Uh, uh, we have uh, voices that come to our studios every week. We do about uh, last year we recorded uh, a little over six million words uh, in seventy-seven languages. And so our clients uh, who have various voiceover needs, a lot of telecom applications, a lot of uh, voiceover for video, um, and then so we provide those actors and voice talent that do you know, a wide range of uh, uh, narration, uh, voiceover, uh, characters even, anything to do with the voice. And then we partner with our talent, uh, people like Linda, 
that uh, um, that are looking for uh, something more than just a single talent. And so we provide the whole production process and maintain that process, uh, you know, moving into the future. So it makes it easy for updates and, and the like. So that's a kind of a thumbnail sketch of what we do. Now, you've also, you also have a great voice. You, you yourself have a very nice voice. I know when I first met you, I thought, you must have been in radio, broadcasting. You definitely have the pipes. So you did do a little bit of work in that, right? Yeah, I, I, I was the first talent when I started uh, about 30 years ago. And, uh, but then um, the people that do this every day, like Linda, it's, uh, it, you, know, you really have to do it a lot to really be good. And at the level that we're performing with the volume of work that we do, uh, you know, we work with you know, great actors and great voice talent, and they can deliver very quickly and very effectively. And that's when you have a business built around it. That's, uh, you really got to be able to work with people that do that good. I was an okay talent, but I... I, I, I can't do all the things that you've got to do as a talent. As a talent, you got to be able to do you know five or six things really, really good, from reading to intonation and uh, you know timbre of your voice and those types of things. And and so I just realized early on that uh, uh, there there are folks out there and people like Linda that do this all day every day, and it's it's hard to compete with people from a performance standpoint when they they do it all the time. Well, Marcus, you said you first fell in love with audio at the university in Atlanta and then you saw a need and the, everything about GM Voices I find so connects with the needs of your clients. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think, well, there was another reason that, um, that I brought other voices in. Uh, I would be meeting with a client and I'd play a sample and if it was a male voice or if they thought it was my, my voice, they wouldn't tell me they didn't like that voice because they wouldn't <laughs> want to hurt my feelings, right? Yeah. And, and so I thought uh, as a business guy, or I, I was all about taking care of the customer, right? So I wanted to make it easy for the customer to buy. And so uh, when I had multiple voices, that issue went away and uh, it wasn't a big issue, but ultimately I, I wanted to provide the solution. And the solution is a lot of the technology and the process around it. And it's uh, then we plug in whichever talent the client wants. Uh, and we have a wide range of talent because, uh, you know, voice is so subjective. And a lot of times you can't even articulate why you like a particular voice. And so what we've always, as a company, uh, worked on is providing multiple choices and solutions so the client can pick the one they think is right for them. And also something you specialize in really is branding. You'll look at the company, you'll see the company's needs, and you'll say what type of voice, starting off with female, male voice, but also the, the, this, the timbre, the, the, everything about the voice, the personality of the voice, you just have this real knack for finding the voice that will resonate with the company's brand. Yeah, so the company spent, you know, millions, tens of millions of dollars, you know, crafting their brand in the marketplace. And then uh, what has happened in the past is they, uh, the branding gets lost when it goes over to the call center and the people call the company and Absolutely. the brand is lost. And, and so what we try to do is to come up with a, uh, a voice or a personality or persona is really the phrase we use for it most most nowadays yeah. uh, is to come up with a persona that dovetails and matches that brand. We don't create brands, but we ultimately can find a voice that matches the brand uh, the and the image that that company already has in the marketplace. So that's really the key to uh, uh, to our you know offerings is to make it easy. Uh, and our job is to throw the options. We we do all the the, the uh, groundwork. Uh, to find out about the company and their brand and what they stand for and their image in the marketplace. And then we decide, basically, or we go and pick voices that we think would be good yeah. to bring that, uh, that brand uh, to life through a voice. And so and it's kind of art, but, you know, it's science too. But, uh, but that's kind of, kind of the way we normally approach that. Yes, and then you have the consistency because these voices are in your stable, so to say, on your roster. And then that company can always request the same voice. Sure, that happens often. Uh, we just had a job that we did the other day, a new line of our offerings where we're doing character voices more and more for clients. And this was a, uh, a, a company that was uh, about $300 million in sales. It was a big company. They had a big video production department, and they did most of their work internally. But they, were, they do a, a lot of wacky, crazy stuff, and they were looking for some outlandish, uh, like WWF, you know, the WWF, you know, really big voice announcers uh, oh, to be able to, 
to do a narration for this comedy piece they had done. And it was real easy for us to find that person for them. And uh, we, do, we do other narration works for them. And then when they needed the characters, in this case, a you know, hard sell announcer, we were able to deliver that very easily. And, you know, and it's really about, they had the people that could do it uh, in, on staff, but they wouldn't have been able to, do, to do the caliber of deliver, delivery that we were able to do in just a few minutes. Absolutely, so, yes. And then one of the things you do is is e-learning. That's a that's a big niche in in what you what you work on, correct? Correct. Uh, that's uh, uh, one of our newer markets that we're pr uh, pursuing, and uh, that's where we met you, Rick, at one of the shows. Yep. And uh, uh, Jay Steinworth, our uh, business uh, development mm -hmm. director, uh, met you at a show a while back, and um, so it's just it's a new market for us. And but we we th it's a very growing market. We, there's lots of opportunity there, and so we know that the same needs as apply in the telecom market that we are pretty involved in uh, the GPS navigation embedded devices markets mm. that we are very involved in and uh, then the video production website production and then of course e-learning is just a you know the same process really from a production standpoint but it's a new market for uh, for the need for voice and I, what I've seen a lot of times is the a lot of the e-marketing um, I mean I'm sorry e-learning applications um, are being done with internal talent and at first it seems like you're saving money uh, doing that but in the long run um, for just a, a slightly higher investment or slightly larger investment you can get professional talent to carry that message across more effectively and and these are typically educational uh, videos will be used for a long long time and so it makes sense to, 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 to make them where they're easy to follow, easy to understand, easy on the ear, and a natural speaking voice talent is going to bring that educational message to, to life just, you know, a lot better. And keep the listener engaged. Yes, definitely. What, what have you seen in, in today's day and age? What trend do you see in voices? Has anything changed from what it was 20, 30 years ago to, to today? Yeah, if you looked at it historically, I'd say, you know, 30 years ago, it was all about the big voice. And you had the guy that had the big voice like this, mm -hmm. and, um, and he spoke, and had great tone, very nice sound, and pronounced his words perfectly, but it just wasn't believable. And for a long time, when we first started doing recordings on telephone systems and voicemail, automated attendant, IVR, that's when you call the bank to get your bank balance, the voice that talks mm -hmm. back to you, uh, you know, it was like... Um, that was what was expected. And then over time, uh, speech recognition really dramatically upgraded the level of quality that was expected on the phones uh, because just you know, anybody with a tape deck and a microphone can, can be an announcer. And, but ultimately, there's a set of skills that go back you know, that, to, to support that. And I think um, so we started with the big voice. Uh, and then um, most of the voices on telecom systems in the early days were always women. And I think that was because uh, women uh, for decades were the ones answering the phone at the receptionist area, right? And so they would so often get, you know, Wendy, the receptionist, to do the voiceover when they put voicemail in. And um, one of the, the, the problems with that is so many companies jumped on the automated attendant bandwagon so quickly because they thought they could lower costs by eliminating a you know, a position for somebody answering the phone. And the implementations a lot of times weren't done, done very well. And so that's where the, uh, the, uh, the automated attendant and the voicemail systems and the IVRs where you get your bank balance, you know, people really hated those things because they, you know, they, didn't, they didn't solve the problem. They couldn't get to the person they wanted to, to, to talk to. In a lot of instances, you would have uh, uh, companies were trying to prevent the, call, the customer from getting to a, a live person. Uh, because it was more expensive, but I, I think that was that was kind of a sh for a short while that happened. But then you had the big voice, and then you had the receptionist, uh, and then you had um, you know still the radio sound or voice actors, um, and and I'm sorry, uh, voice talent that really who are more the people that we work with or actors, and that's really you've been coming on you know over the last uh, decade or so, and I think a natural delivery sounding like a real person is much more palatable to the end user nowadays and that's why more companies are hiring actors to do the work you know it's yeah. interesting and it's we, also much more engaging oh yeah yeah well, it's believable 
I yeah, remember we had a we had a I think it was a Panasonic phone system. This is uh, I don't know 15 16 years ago. It had the worst voice in the world on it. And and it was it was a female voice. It was not voice uh text to speech. It was a real voice. And it would say things like please wait a moment. It's like whoa. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> and like I and you know you would call different people and they all had the same phone system and go my gosh it's awful. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was hard to replace the voice, so that's why people just left it. It was one of the meanest voices I've ever heard. And for a phone system, you don't really want, you know, thank you for calling, please wait a moment. It's like, oh, that was horrible. And uh, I think we kept it a year, threw it out, never looked at it again. It was one of the worst systems ever. Uh, yeah, another, another uh, something along those lines is in the early days when the GPS systems first came out. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know those were those were kind of yeah you know, they were kind of kludgy in the beginning they didn't work so good but then as they got better and better they they were good and so we did a lot of those voices and then they decided to get some of these character actors they had um, Mr T did one Dennis Hopper did one oh, so you could actually have those guys telling you whether to turn left or turn right and it got a pretty good bit of media but it was because it was funny and it was cool but you're going to have Mr. T telling you how to drive <laughs> yeah. for just a couple of minutes. Turn like, yeah. right, fool! <laughs> then you turn it off, yeah, but then you turn it off. And so that never really went anywhere, but it was uh, but it was a funny idea that nobody really wanted. It was kind of a gag. And, um, uh, but, but we see now with, um, uh, with talking about the technology, the technology is continuing to change. And um, uh, uh, the text-to-speech is the new big mm -hmm. thing because the text-to-speech is really... Uh, you know, getting better and better from a quality standpoint. Um, the um, uh, I guess the these are on applications outside of the e-learning e area right now. I think, but ultimately, uh, the Amazon Echo and the yep. Google Home. If you've seen those, those yep. those sound pretty good uh, yeah. as the computerized yeah. voices. Yeah, they're they're pretty good. And some of them, yeah. actually, I don't know if they're computerized or they have somebody. A, a friend of mine recently recorded. I think it was. 50,000 lines or 250,000. It was an enormous amount of lines of code to be one of the four Google voices that mm -hmm. work in all of wow. their different apps. And I'm not going to name him because he was on a non-disclosure, but he said it took him two straight weeks to record thousands and thousands and thousands of snippets of conversations. So, so just like the lady who did Siri, Correct. she said it took her like a month of just recording yeah. little pieces and then they put them all together uh, and it's it's pretty amazing. It's not easy work, but they use real voices for a lot of these, uh, or as a basis of a lot of other text to speech. But it's pretty amazing how they combine everything afterwards. The amount of editing of teeny words. Yes. And from there they and just it's, yeah. It's a very it's a specialty because you really have to be consistent. You have to be one of those voice talents that can reproduce mm -hmm. and be very consistent so that they can put things together. Then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, we were we worked with uh, Susan Bennett on that. We recorded that uh, that Siri program. Oh, did you really? Wow, mm -hmm. I didn't we, know that. Yeah, we recorded that in two thousand and five, um, and and we've recorded quite a few others uh, for companies I can't name, uh, but yeah. are very large in the uh, in the space. And um, you know, there's uh, that, that technology is continuing to get better. But it was uh, you know twenty years ago, it was. Uh, they call it the drunken Swede, you know. <laughs> you, know it, you know that because everybody knows that sound. It was it was yep. like a it was like a computer talking, but it was you could barely understand it. But it wasn't anything that you want to listen to for more right. than a minute or two. Right, that's funny. So so you were involved in that, and it's funny. Somebody just figured out who she was. Uh, she didn't really tell anybody up front. Somebody figured it out, and then it all came out, and she admitted, "Yes, it was me." And it took X number of weeks or a month. Uh, but that was sort of interesting that, that somebody who knew her went, wait a minute, that sounds like your voice. Yeah, well, it's because she's, well, she's an actress. And she's mm -hmm. been working for me for, with me for like 30 years, and she lives here in, in Atlanta. Oh, okay. And, and so she, uh, she recorded it, but she had a great voice. She, she had a, uh, you know, the, her voice was really rich. It was really thick, like a, like a male voice in a sense, mm -hmm. but it was very feminine, but it was really rich, and um, it was just... Uh, she just had a great voice, and, yeah. and it turned out that yeah. it lended itself to that process, and then they would record all these uh, files for hours and hours, and they, the scientists, the, their, the, the, I guess their speech scientists go back and take those sounds and then make the, allow the, uh, uh, the computer to recreate uh, 
you know, a vocabulary using that talent's voice. So it's pretty amazing. Hmm. Amazing, now, yes. Now, yes. now, Marcus, one thing that you folks also do, and I know because we've got some proposals out waiting for approval for localization. You folks record in a lot of different languages. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the way that started was uh, in the early days, we were doing voiceovers. Now we'd go to the trade shows uh, at the co telecom conferences, and I would be there um, because, you know, most of these uh, telecom systems had recordings, but they usually got uh, a staff person to do them. And so for many years, I was the... I was the only company there, GM Voices, that was actually providing professional voices. And so, um, and, you know, they would, um, uh, they, uh, the voices would, um, uh, we would provide those voices. I'm sorry, what was the question again? I got, got lost my train of thought. Oh, of, of how, how you, you got the localization, mm -hmm. the different oh, yeah. languages and that so, you now um, do. So we were doing these recordings and then, and we were doing it for the guys that manufactured the voicemail systems and then they would contact me and say, hey, the, the English voice that you did great, what, did for us was great, but I need Spanish. Can you do Spanish? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And so I hung up the phone and it was, hey, we got to find a Spaniard or somebody that speaks Spanish. <laughs> and so we scrambled around and found somebody that's spoke Spanish and then uh, the uh, did the translation and and then so that over time you know that was driven by North America so you had Spanish and you had you know Cuban Spanish or Spanish in South Florida and, yep. uh, and, and California then you had French Canadian and then as these companies went all over the world with their technology we went with them and the thing that really w gave us a springboard to success with the languages our first big language deal was the something that many people may remember uh, was called Iridium. Do you remember that? Yes. Mm -hmm. no. okay, Iridium was the global satellite system that came out in the, I guess it was the mid to late 90s, and they put a bunch of satellites up all over the world. They were going to revolutionize the world, and everybody was going to have a phone, and you could use it anywhere in the world. And so we did uh, all of their uh, voice prompting in, uh, I believe it was 14 or 15 languages. <laughs> and wow. In that case, we had to, uh, and then it became more important to um, to be able to provide, you know, more options and various dialects, and so that was a that was a big uh, piece of our business then when we grew to the languages, and then so now we do over a hundred languages, but we actually do recording sessions all over the world. So we could have a talent in a studio in Tokyo talking into uh, a microphone in the studio, and then it's broadcast via ISDN uh, digital phone lines, banded ISDN lines, where we can bring that signal over here to uh, Alpharetta, Georgia, north of Atlanta, and record it real time. So it takes the full bandwidth audio, compresses it, and sends it down the lines, and then we're recording in real time. We may have a director in LA directing the talent over the phone, and maybe a customer in New York listening all at the same time. So what's Crazy. happened is this, and this studio technology has been around for a while, um, so, but what it's done is just kind of knocked down the geographic boundaries mm -hmm. from providing voices to anybody anywhere in the world. And while we do work in a number of uh, European uh, countries, most of our work that we do is for North American-based companies that are doing business in other parts of the world. Yes. So uh, it'll be, we have several uh, very large customers that um, in technology uh, that they, when they uh, are doing an implementation, we may do an application, a call-in application, for example, for a computer company to, for service. And then, but we may have to do that in 60 languages for 90 call centers all over the world. Mm. But in yes. each call center, it has to be done locally. So, so it has local market credibility. And then, so that we manage that process, and we have translators and uh, voice actors in all these different languages, you know, all over the world, and we call on them regularly when a customer needs that language. Nice, nice. And well, again, that's fitting. That's meeting a, a huge need. Yes, yes. So we like talking around here. <laughs> <laughs> talking is Obviously. good. Obviously. So what are you thinking? What What is the next move? I mean, you're so attuned to the times. You're so attuned to the different needs. What What What's next? Um, well, I think the uh, the speech uh, the speech user interface is uh, really what we're talking about. How you make a it's about making these applications more natural, and yes. so the most natural interface. 
or people is speaking. And mm -hmm. as the speech recognition gets better and better and better, and the examples I mentioned earlier about the Echo, the Amazon Echo, and the, the Google uh, product, this Cortana, mm -hmm. that uh, Microsoft has, Siri is getting better and better and better, and it's just such an easy uh, interface to work with. And I, I have begun uh, doing a lot of my writing through dictation now, and it just, it really changes the way you have to think about things, because, and it makes you a better speaker, I think, because you, if you start battling, then that doesn't work in the, in speech uh, recognition yeah. when you're like dictating uh, a letter or something like that. But I had I had just started doing that in the last year or so, and it's really changed the way. It made me a lot more efficient. Where I use text all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, particularly in the car with the messaging, it's just so yep. so easy. So I think that making those user interfaces easier to understand and easier to interface with is really the uh, the the big frontier with lots of opportunity i think in the coming years and, and marcus one thing that's interesting is that uh, if you have a phone and you can actually dictate all of your text messages you could dictate all of your emails and you don't have to train the phone like you used to with the old dictation but for the most yes. part unless you have a really bad voice or heavy accentuation it can pick up almost everybody yeah it's now, amazing uh, we've actually done uh, been involved in tests where we'd go out and record people talking lots of different ways, different accents and, and the like, but it is amazing what they can do today. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. Now, every so often it comes up with the weirdest translations of something you say and people write back and go, did you really mean that? <laughs> and, you, and I look and I go, no, not really. Uh, it, just, it just got it totally backwards, but I'd say 95% of the time it's accurate. Oh, yeah, 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 I, I, I love it. I have an iPhone and I use that, you know, extensively, you know, for... Uh, certainly messaging and then uh, but I'm actually when I'm at the desk and writing you mm -hmm. know a chapter uh, about something I, I have learned and discipline I, you have to discipline yourself you to do because I'm a pretty good typist and I was used to mm -hmm. you know, typing but uh, but it's really much more uh, fluid to just talk but it, yep. it, it yep. takes a while to get used to doing that and and I get, can imagine. and giving it the directions like um, Hello, Marcus, comma, new paragraph. And then you keep going. And But once you get used to it, it's real easy to continue writing. And, and it also slows you down to think a little more about how you want to say something. Yeah, yeah. So well, I know, you know, who, you know who's, who's got decades of experience doing this kind of thing? Hmm. Lawyers and doctors. Oh, that's true. Oh, they're yes. Dictate. They're always dictating. And, they, and you know, they're, it comes natural to those guys. Yep, I noticed that the other day when I was in a doctor's office how easy it was. Yeah, they, they constantly, they have the little microphone, they go, um, yeah. I'm talking to this nice gentleman, Marcus Graham, and you know he's got a little bit of a condition of the right shoulder, we're going to give it this, da, da, da. Boom, they're done. That goes over to transcription yeah. or directly into the records now. And it's it's pretty amazing. And they've been doing that for, like you said, a while. It's been at least 20 years they've been doing that. Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, my uncle, when I was a kid, he gave me a, a first one of the cassette uh, tapes I had in the early 70s. Hmm. And he got it from a company called Dictaphone, which oh, was yeah. one of the original <laughs> big dicta uh, dictation companies. Yep. And so they, they've been doing that for you know decades. It's it's. Uh, but anyway, so for us business people to get into it, 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 it really only makes sense. But mm -hmm. it does take a while to get used to it. I still edit with uh, with my type with my uh, uh, keyboard right right because it is a little hard to edit with the uh, voice there are commands that let you go backwards delete erase but that gets tricky they're clumsy they're that's a that's clumsy. a little clumsy yeah, yeah as, as you as erase the whole i just got a new keyboard some while ago which i gave to my wife because she didn't seem to mind it um i had it for about a week and i deleted at least 1200 emails by accident with it uh -oh. it, it was a mechanical keyboard and the delete key must have been so sad. i hit it for like half a second before it and I was just sort of touching it, and I realized ah, I just deleted 500 emails. <laughs> oh gosh! That's not good. Um, okay. And it was so fast. In like one second, they're gone. So I uh, gave it to her. She did, she hits everything with a with a vengeance. So it's like didn't even notice it. Um, <laughs> and she but learned the how overall to, the overall goal back to what what you were saying, Marcus. The humanizing of technology is really I think that uh, it's a great way to go. I mean, I'm sure the possibilities there are endless that you can find to work on. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, well, it's about making it. It's um, it's about making the experience uh, easy for the user. So it's yes. it's all about making it easy for the user. And a lot of times, that's it's hard to make a user interface this easy because there's so many things you got to think about. You know, just yes. it's uh, 
it's it's hard. But yeah, but when you can get there and you get your actors to be able to you know sound natural and you know we're and connect so with the user. Oh yeah. Well, here let me tell you a story. This is a, this is a company that we're working with that, uh, that we're doing some voiceover for. This was for promotional uh, work, but they didn't want to use the regular voice actors. They wanted to use real people off the street, hmm. and so we ended up finding some people uh, that they just they're just real people because uh, and it was they were it was an IT audience, and they didn't want. Mm. They said, "Oh, the, the IT guys can smell a professional voice a mile away." <laughs> So they wanted a, yeah. a real guy. They wanted a real IT guy to explain how to use their apps, and we ended up. And I see that happening a lot in, in in the e-learning space. So it's really about sounding like a real person. But what what you'll find is um, a really good actor talks like people think a real person talks. Hmm. Right. Yes. And so it's about the performance, and if the performance is believable. Then it's easier to listen to, and it's it's, uh, it's more caring. I heard a, a multimedia uh, video the, just the other day that a young lady put together that was it had some really cool graphics on it, and she was narrating it because she works for this company. And I was like, God, that sounds so natural. And it's like you were actually in a presentation that this girl was given a presentation, and it was just it was so natural and easy. And she didn't she wasn't a professional actor or. You know, but it, it was—it was. She was. She had credibility. You know, another yes. example on that is when, uh, when you read a, a or listen to a, a book, or an audio book. Mm -hmm. And me personally, I I can't listen to an audio book that's got some professional announcer reading it, because I want to listen to it. I want to listen to the guy or girl that wrote it, because it's that's where the credibility is. I mean, it's authenticity. Yes. It's about. It's not about how great you pronounce the words. It's just like Malcolm Gladwell is a good example. Uh, Outliers and um, a Blink uh, and the uh, new book he wrote Looking about uh, Goliath. Uh, mm -hmm. It's um, what's the word? It's uh, it's about uh, uh, David and Goliath. It's the uh, oh it's, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. and it's it's to hear him read it. It just is so much more credible, and it's just it's much more inter interesting to listen to because it's got credibility and authenticity. Yeah. So, um, and, and that's why, so if you're doing e-learning, a lot of times it may be better to have somebody that, that knows that stuff, but then it, they got to be a pretty good speaker, you know, so. Right, because yeah. a lot of, a lot of the e-learning stuff, unfortunately, is done by people who are reading in a very boring, flat manner, and mm -hmm. as a result, it, it just turns everybody off. Welcome to the course. In this lesson, you'll learn. It's like, oh, no, <laughs> oh, no, we've, we, we, they just knocked us out. Yeah, yeah, we call that the morgue presentation. The morgue presentation, yeah, <laughs> and it's it's, 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 it's it's still cold. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, it's tough. Uh, well, yeah, I'm, back, I'm, it's co I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm I just I just wanted to agree with you. I'm I'm coaching a gal right now who just wrote her first book, and mm -hmm. she didn't know if if she could do it. And so I'm coaching her. We're recording in my studio, and she brings really some some interest for the for the listener and then when i cut she's she'll go like well how shall i do the titles and i so and i go well just straighten up your back and read the title and it'll come out differently and she's so excited so together it's really nice to see how her audiobook is developing mm -hmm. Well, I think in a case like that, you, she needs a coach, and it sounds like you're acting as her coach. And yes, that, I am. You, you can help somebody, a regular person that's not, you know, schooled in that arena, mm -hmm. help them really bring it to life. And that's what it's about. Because it's if you bring it to life, it's then it's interesting, and more people are going to listen to it and enjoy it and get more out of it. Yes. Hopefully. Yes. Without changing her personality, let her. Those are her words. So letting her read her book. And just some technical things that I can share with her and help her along. It's mm -hmm. it's turning out nice. Mm -hmm. And you're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> this is a lot of fun to do all this. Now, now, Mark, Marcus, we are at the end of our time. How how can someone get a hold of you? What's the best way to get a hold of you? And we'll put uh, your website and everything in the show notes. But what's what's a good way? If somebody wants to do e-learning or want to do marketing, advertising, whatever they're doing. <laughs> Uh, well, gmvoices.com is our website, and uh, you can get to me through a message to uh, any of the broader, or uh, m.gram at gmvoices.com. But if I could, 
uh, you know be of any service to anybody individually. Um, but um, but you can listen to lots of samples. We got I think there's over a thousand demos on our website and um, some of the various vertical markets that we're kind of involved involved in. You can get more information there. It's a great business, and you guys do a great job at it. Thank you so yeah. much. It's it's a pleasure to be here and talk to you. And uh, we're excited about the e-learning space. We just see that there's lots going to be lots more opportunities there. You know what for, I'm starting uh, to get excited about the e-learning, mm-hmm. but the the ability to do virtual reality with e-learning, things oh, like the yes. Microsoft oh, yeah. Hololens and some of these phones are now doing the the virtual reality headset. I saw a demo at a trade show I went to last year, where you're in a jungle scene. You just put on the headset. Now you're in the jungle. And a tiger comes up to you. It's for kids. It and and it tells you this is a tiger. Mm-hmm. Talk to the tiger. Hi, though, tiger. And and it responds. And the tiger is talking to. It was beautiful. Uh, and then you see a lion. And then you see other animals. But that's a, an incredible way to learn about the the animals and other things. They had a whole mess of tutorials. And that's probably one of the waves of the future. So you'll probably be seeing that in the next, I'd say, one to five years as something steady. Well, you know what they say, it's like if you tell somebody something, then you show them, mm-hmm. you, know, there's, you know, the visuals are going to be huge. Yeah, imagine doing yes. it while you're showing it to them. That's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Well, I don't know, like, like a lot of the e-learning uh, applications are, have some type of visuals where they're, they're mm-hmm. uh, you know, PowerPoint, which can kind of put you to death pretty, put you, put you <laughs> sleep pretty easy. Yeah. Um, but there's, uh, yeah, the visuals, I think uh, that's where there's going to be a huge opportunity. Yeah. And, in, in that space, I think. Yeah, it's, it's going to come. It'll come down to good writing and good video, and Nothing then add the voices, and life is great. Starts with a script. Starts with a script. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. Marcus, we really appreciate you coming on. We'll put the show notes and give people your website address and your information. And uh, good luck. Have a great 2017. It's a little late, but happy New Year again. And yeah, um, and we'll see you next time. And for all you people watching, please subscribe. Give us your feedback. Get a hold of Marcus and, and Linda. They're, they both do great things in the voiceover world. Have a nice one, Thanks everyone. Thanks for being we'll, on the show, Marcus. Yeah. Thank you, Linda. It was a pleasure to see you on the show. Or not see you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> we're, we're not seeing each other today. But you'll see you guys look great on the show. Um, have a good one, everyone. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Oh. You still there, Rick?